Material science is the exploitation of, of the fundamental building blocks of nature, which are atoms, and these are the interactions, these are their, their specific chemical identities, to design solids or molecules that execute some function that we can use in our lives. I think the major inspiration comes from the need or demand for renewable energy and a better protection of the environment. Our research, we're trying to develop new uh, technology, new materials that can have environmental applications such as um, clean, cleaning up water is our main focus. My lab is mostly uh, working on uh, functional nanomaterials like nanoparticles and one of the specific things that we're working on right now is looking at application of this thing as a catalyst that can replace platinum because platinum is a catalyst of choice at this point. But we know it's expensive and the reserve is limited so we have to find a way to replace this thing eventually. Our overarching goal is to make a contribution to the transition from kind of the, the burning of the fossil fuels towards more renewable energy. The way we're doing this particularly is we're focusing on organic molecules or pigments, um, the kind of molecules you might actually find in nature when you break open a leaf. And our idea is that because they're long and because they're like chains, you can use them to move energy and charge over a long distance. And effectively what we want to do, what we want to understand, is how do we make this molecular network so that we can efficiently harvest sunlight and move it over a long distance so that it gets to where it needs to go so that it can generate the power that we can ultimately use in a device to power whatever we need to power. We can use our material to power the entire community or society. For example, our material can harvest sunlight, uh, like 100% you and then we can use another nanomaterials to store all this energy. I guess the long-term goal is really to develop materials that will be low cost, stable for applications in solar energy conversion into electricity or chemical fuel and they'll be cheap and low cost to people for people to use and they'll help to protect the environment. We make our structures using inorganic metal metals that are not toxic we were able to remove toxic anions from water, any water, so wastewater, um, anything that's contaminated with uh, a, a toxic metal such as arsenic or um, chromium. You know, it's really exciting because you're, you're just trying something that nobody's done before and you could have potentially really large impact. Uh, my group is a part of the material initiative. How do we design a material with improved optical properties for photovoltaic application, for example, or we can design a material good for solar fuel conversion. For example, we can convert the sunlight and the water to hydrogen fuel. In this process, we need to understand many different physics. My computational will play the role of understanding the science and helping interpret what happened in experiments and has also helped design new material which can be better than what we have now. You basically have to know everything and also you learn everything. That's the beauty of our research. Molecules interact in very many different ways and so to be able to make them do what you want is, is actually a very challenging task. It is extremely humbling to build in the right interactions between molecules so that uh, when you put them together, the work is more or less already done for you by exploiting the physical laws of our, of our world, of our universe, to, to assemble them, to use this word of self-assembly uh, and to drive them into a place structurally where they can um, effectively execute the function that we want. And so uh, nature does this uh, masterfully, and so we want to one day approach this in the laboratory, effectively uh, do this artificially.